Polygon Matic is up 55% within the last week, and many people are asking what in the world is going on? Should we be buying right now? Why is it rising in the first place? Is the bottom in? And so in today's video, I'm going to try my best to answer all of those questions and let you know exactly what I'm doing personally. So with that said, let's not waste any time at all. Let's get straight into today's video and talk about some Polygon Matic. So as we can see, Polygon recently achieved carbon neutrality, which is a balance between emitting and absorbing carbon. This has led to a surge in Matic price in the last few days, jumping about 30 percent now in an official blog post dated june 21st the blockchain company said that polygon has made a major first step towards becoming carbon negative with the retirement of 400,000 in carbon credits representing 104,000 tons of greenhouse gases or the entirety of the network co2 debt since inception reaching carbon neutrality is an important first step but there's more work ahead polygon will lead the way as the whole industry moves towards becoming a net positive for the environment. Now, some of you newer investors out there may not have been around, but something very specifically happened last year in which there was news come out that Bitcoin was terrible for the environment. And what ended up happening was ridiculous. Bitcoin actually went down for quite a little while. Many proof of stake protocols went straight up because everyone's like, oh, proof of stake is better for the environment than proof of work simply for the fact that it doesn't require so much energy, obviously. And this huge wave of people just specifically focusing on how good for the environment a specific entity is is now among us right and it's going to forever be among us especially as we do move towards you know litigation within the governments that um, kind of limit the amount of um, things that can negatively affect the environment of course um, and I think this has become more increasingly important so the fact that we are seeing Polygon Matic now taking those steps and reaching a point of carbon neutrality which can they can kind of then own the idea that they are good for the environment or just at least not detrimental to the environment puts them in a position to take advantage of that wave of of, you know, uh, environmental friendly cryptos that we have seen and will be seeing likely over the next few years. Now, as a result of this, what we can see is that Matic's price is up quite substantially. We can see here Matic has been up straight, right, for the last five days, which looks like a growth from bottom to top of roughly at 1.62%, but currently right around 55%. Now, as a result of this, of course, everyone's saying, well, was this the bottom? You know, was 30 cents the bottom? Should we start to expect to, you know, see 70, 50, or 70, 80, 90 cents, you know, 50% gains from here? Or should we start to expect this to just be a relief rally that'll lead to a continuation to the top side or the bottom side? So, what I want to talk about now is what I'm doing, okay? Um, as a result of the news that we did see, am I buying, am I not buying exactly what I'm doing? So, personally speaking, I do really like what we're seeing here. Of course, we were doing a little bit of accumulating on the downside, but I am not convinced that this is anything but a relief rally just yet. Now, I'm going to go over my reasons as to why I think it's just a relief rally that is likely to be followed by some falls to the downside and what it would take to invalidate that thought process to say, okay, this is not just a relief rally. We are actually continuing back up to some of these higher levels okay so the reasons why I think it is a relief rally let's start with those first and foremost I always look at the RSI for reference of how the price is moving in relation just to the RSI itself right how are we looking and one thing we can see is that we are already getting a case of bearish divergence um, on the top side which is not you know uh, really ever a good thing we can see here that in regards to what was going on back here we started to see the bullish or the bearish divergence playing out already we started to see in this little event right here we were setting low Lower highs, higher highs. That is an immediate, immediate, immediate sign that we could see a fall relatively soon. What happened? Boom, we crashed to the downside. And one thing you can see is that now that we have bounced back up to the upside, you can already see here on the RSI that we have now set the higher highs on a macro now. Boom, still setting higher highs while still setting these lower highs. We haven't even come back up to this trend line yet, right? We are still setting lower highs while setting higher highs on the RSI. And just like back here, it led to a correction. I believe it very possibly could lead to a correction again within the next couple, you know, within the next week or so, probably, okay? You know, this news has been fantastic, but this news isn't so good that it can make this thing completely excluded from the rest of the market. I just don't personally see that happening. One thing you can see is that this is something that we're seeing on all time frames, on the four hour time frames. We are overextended to the top side in the quote unquote over or overbought territory, right? We're overbought here. We go to the hourly time frames. We're overbought. We were overbought. We've you know kind of capitulated a little bit, but overall you can see the point, right? We are overbought on the shorter time frames and on the longer time frames like the dailies. We are seeing a case of bearish divergence, and I just personally don't think that that is a good time to be buying. Now another thing we can see is that we are running into strong resistance at the 20-day simple moving average, and unless we are able to get back above 
something and hold above it. It just has been something that rejects us every single time to the downside. So seeing that we are getting rejected off the 20 SMA, just like we were back here, while we are seeing bearish divergence, just like we saw back here, I have no reason to believe that we are not going to see another push towards the downside, maybe even to revisit this 30 cent low. Okay. So overall, I am still just under the conviction that we are going to see this thing pulling back to the downside. Now, another thing that does make me just nervous in the sense that we are starting to see the price get um, reach a point of resistance is this zone between 56 cents and 48 cents. Now, the reason this zone specifically is important to me is because of what happened at this wick and what happened at this support establishment, okay? Now, what we can see is that once we came into this little zone between 57 and 48 cents, what happened is that we started to see the, the bulls, just, I mean, just absolutely swarm this thing. The bulls bought and bought and bought and bought, shot this thing back up to the top side, came back down to the support. The bulls stepped in again, shot this thing back up to the top side, and then we eventually did see the bears overtake the bulls and crash straight through the bottom side, and the people who did buy anywhere within this zone saw losses from as far as 45 percent to you know not as bad but of course still not good to 35 percent so anyone who accumulated in this zone was down 40 to even 35 percent at one point so as we do enter back into this zone there is the likelihood that we will see this previous level of support flip into resistance and as continue to the downside is anyone who held that bought in here could very possibly take profits as they do come back to break even in this same exact area. Okay, so there are always those psychological things to think about. So considering all of those things, I just am not convinced yet that we are not going to see this thing continue back to the downside. Even if it goes up to 60 cents, I think there's a strong chance we do still get a push back towards the downside. Optimally set a uh, you know a higher low than continue, but realistically, I just don't see this being a move that continues of this nature. I, I do believe it, it it leads to another fall back to the downside here okay the only thing that will convince me um that we are not seeing that happening is first and foremost that we break it's about three things three confirmations that can be summed into one if we break the 20 simple moving average that's the first sign if we then break the 57 cent level and get past this key level of support up here that we saw, that's the second sign. And the third sign is if we break this key level of resistance, right? This descending line here. If we do all three of those things, realistically getting to 65 cents or above, realistically, all that leaves us with is getting back above this level of resistance up here around, you know, 75 cents, which I believe could become much more possible if we are able to do something of this nature, right? We break back above all three of these key levels, we hold above them, and then we start to continue. I think this is a very possible thing you know that we break this level and at that point i would start to really go into hardcore bull mode but personally i am skeptical and i am not expecting this thing to make a huge move back up to a dollar until we are at minimum capable of getting back above this key level of resistance which would then put us back above this key zone of support as well as our 20 day simple moving average all of which will act as key levels of resistance up until the point we clear them obviously okay so overall this is, you know, fantastic news for Matic. I believe that them going forward, this is going to put them, again, in a position to be uh, better, right? Quote, unquote, better than many other cryptos and put them in a more advantageous position in relation to other cryptos due to the fact that they are carbon neutral. I think it's all great things, but realistically, we have to be honest with ourselves. This market is still not out of the woods at all, and we can't get too caught up in these short-term pumps and then end up getting dumped on. So if we do start to see this thing pulling back, I may open up some short trades. As we can see, the market does move very fast i don't really like shorting smaller you know top five and below cryptos during times like this because i think simply that it is very risky i stick to bitcoin and ethereum because they don't move as fast as something that went up 50 percent in just four or five days right so overall the biggest thing i can say is just to be very cautious this is a good thing fundamentally and if you do believe in matic this should even further incentivize you to appreciate what they are doing but it isn't anything in my opinion that we should get too excited about just yet because we still have a lot of ga uh, gr um, gains to make in terms of you know ground to cover to to be able to say that okay this thing is finally actually seeing some growth okay so overall that's going to be about it for today's video i'm not really purchasing much until we do at least see 60 cents 65 cents cleared once that does happen then i will become more comfortable but until then i'm just going to relax sit back and see what happens and so with that said of course i hope you guys did enjoy today's video and i will see you all next time peace